Look at me. Look at me. It's a little thing. It's a little thing. I'm search and make sure you don't have anything in the bottom or something. Shoplifting is not only a crime, but a foolish choice that can lead to severe consequences, including fines and potential imprisonment. Yet, some people still choose to indulge in it. But I'd always say it's not a crime until you're caught, and that's exactly what we'll witness in today's videos. So, without further ado, I give you all the instances when people at Walmart thought they could outsmart cops. I don't have anything. This necklace is from a tattoo shop. Okay. So like I said, all that just made up? I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. All right, man. So based off everything we've been seeing, we were told, Walmart's been watching you on the cameras for a little bit, all right? So because everything you done, man, you're going to be placed under arrest for disorderly conduct, all right? The chance by that. Stop. Stop. On January 21st, 2022, the Dunwoody police received a report about someone acting strangely at the Walmart in Dunwoody, Georgia. The individual in question was observed opening packages, taking off labels, and sneakily hiding decorative jewelry in his pockets. Worried that this might lead to theft, the police immediately went to the store. Once there, they checked the surveillance footage in the loss prevention room, which indeed validated the suspicious actions of the man. Yeah, I didn't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> not, that was not what I was expecting no, when I saw Ponytail. We think he might, well, he just grabbed his suitcase, but he took the tags off the suitcase, so he might try to stuff it. But we originally called because he was acting like really weird, like he always cut his suitcase. I got him. Stuff he picked up in here? Yeah. That he like opened up and put on? Yeah. Okay. So he was opening like packages of stuff from in here, like uh, merchandise. And he's wearing it? Well, we've got the necklace on right now. Okay. And then, like I said, he ripped the tags off of the suitcase. Um, he had got a necklace earlier and put it in his pocket, but he put it in the toilet. Oh, that's nice of him. Um, but it's on video, though. What do you just tell him? I don't know how long he's going to be in here. He's been here for like two hours already. And he already been spitting on the floor and just doing weird stuff. Where are we at? Uh, on the violation. Okay, so he's in the back middle. With this compelling evidence in hand, the officers approached the individual in question and initiated a conversation to inquire about his actions. Interestingly, he was unable to produce any identification or wallet, making his situation even more suspicious. As it suggested, he might have had no intentions of paying for the items he had picked. Hey man, what's going on? Sir? Hey, what's going on? What? What's up, man? What's going on? Not much. How you doing tonight? I'm good. You good? Yeah. All right. So, the reason we're out here is that, you know, they've been watching on the cameras for a little bit. Yeah. They saw you cutting stuff up. No. And they pretty much just wanted to leave, man. You got uh, you got any ID on you? No. I didn't cut anything up. You got no ID? No. Nothing like that? No. Okay. Once again, you got nothing? No. No wallet? No. How are we going to pay for this, man? Wallet. So we got called here, obviously, man, because obviously just three of us don't decide to come to Walmart. Um, somebody said you was making noises, using the bathroom, you just opening up packages. Um, I didn't open any packages. You got that necklace on from inside the store. You threw one in the trash can. No. No? No. Yeah, you threw one in the toilet. No. No? So all that was just made up? I don't have anything. This necklace is from the tattoo shop. Okay. So like I said, all that just made up? I don't know what you were saying. I don't know what you were saying. Based off everything we've been seeing, we were told, Walmart's been watching you on the cameras for a little bit, all right? So, because everything you done, man, you're going to be placed under arrest for disorderly conduct, all right? Put chance back. Oh, oh, Stop. What am I being placed for the arrest for? Disorderly, disorderly conduct. conduct. I'm not being Put your hand behind conduct. your back. How am I being arrested for disorderly conduct? Because everything you've been doing, the actions you've been I doing, I haven't man. done anything. However, when confronted by the officers, the man boldly denied any wrongdoing despite the clear video evidence pointing to the contrary. Undeterred, the officers remained steadfast in their commitment to uphold the law and safeguard the store's property. Acknowledging the gravity of the situation, the officers decided to take the man into custody. The man was escorted to the surveillance room, where a thorough search was conducted, revealing an astonishing array of items discreetly stashed in his clothing. How am I being disorderly? I just told you before I told you disorderly conduct. All the actions you've been doing, the stuff you've been doing with the packages, there are no packages. All right, man. What packages are you talking about? All right, man. Walmart has very good cameras. Okay. What are you saying? They've been watching. We do everything I just said. I haven't done anything. All right, brother. 
So how can you arrest me? How can you arrest me? I'm not your brother. You got anything in your purse that I need to know about? Any finger, uh, fingernail clippers, knives, guns, anything like that? No. All right. You got no ID on you, man? No. Do you need that? No. Okay. Yes, I do need that. I okay. do need that. Okay. Uh, it's right here. That's not y'all, right? Yeah. And you asked me to leave the store. So if you ask me to leave the store. No, I said Walmart. No, you asked gave me us to leave the store. That's what you said. Stop, Stop man. You Stop. Said, I said Walmart. No, oh, man, you can't make me sit Look, down. Hey, sit you down. can't make me so I'm standing up. Look, man. You can't make me sit Look. down. What's your last name? For what? This only time that. It's much more than that. Okay. What's your last name? you find out is much more than that. That's fine. What's you your can't last arrest name? me. After realizing he's been caught, the man initially refuses to give the officers his name and continues to claim that he can't be arrested for anything. The officers eventually got his name, but when he was asked to spell it, he barked at the officer. He repeatedly asks the officers what he's being arrested for since he didn't steal or shoplift anything. But we all know it's a crime only when you're caught in the act. After confirming everything, an officer escorts him to the car to be transported to Decob County Jail. That necklace is for me. That's himself. These are off the floor. I'm talking about the necklace that was on my neck. Okay. You can have that back. You can have that back. But these are, are I wasn't talking to you, first of all. I don't care. I'm talking to you. Uh, I wasn't talking to you, first of all. You got I was talking to him. I didn't get answered. You can't answer me. I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't talking to you. So what are you getting a total of? I didn't steal anything and I didn't shoplift. So what are you getting a total of? Gotcha. All right. You're not family. I'm not your family. I'm not your friend. I hear you. Where's my necklace at? Come on, we'll get it back. We're not leaving yet. Ultimately, he was charged with disorderly conduct, as his actions had disrupted the peaceful shopping environment and also violated the law. Teenager caught in the act of theft at Walmart, Lake County, Florida. That's not crazy. You can't read that. I got to do this before. I'm sorry. I get you. He was warning me as I was seeing. Right. And that's what he was talking about. It's just. We'll get it all done tonight. We'll get it squared away. Well, at least the young guy seems to be aware that he messed up. This body cam captured a police officer conducting an investigation on a teenager who was accused of shoplifting at Walmart. The incident unfolded after he was caught stealing the items. The officer, in the course of the investigation, inquired if the teenager possessed any weapons, to which the young guy denied having any. The officer then proceeded to gather information and read the teenager his rights. However, following the recitation of these rights, the teenager breaks down in tears, leaving us to wonder whether it's genuine or a well-acted display. What you say you got in your pockets, bud? Uh, just my phone. Did you say you had a Nick? Yeah, Nick. Oh, no, I thought you said a Nick. I never heard anybody call Nick. Sorry, I'm Nick. You said Nick. I was thinking Nick. I'll come up to this side. Switch me. Um, that's the East Ridge? Yes, sir. Where in Winter Garden you live at? Uh, I live at, um, Avalon. On Avalon? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, one of those pockets, be careful. There's nothing bad, but, but uh, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> were you under 18? Yes, sir. You need to get rid of that <laughs> if you were under 18. Yes, sir. That, um, give me a Good. I need a social You are the girl in that picture is under 18. You can get <laughs> I gotta read you this before I ask you. Okay. Yes, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say you can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer, have him present with you before and during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before and during any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements.
Do you understand each of these constitutional rights that I explained to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Having confirmed your understanding of these constitutional rights, do you voluntarily and knowingly waive your constitutional rights and wish to speak to us now? Okay. I'm on your best. Yeah. Unfortunately, you live out of the county. So, with what we got to do is we'll take you up there tonight. You'll have a bond amount set for you. Whether you can make calls once you start getting out there. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. It's a little thing. It's a little thing. I get you. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. It's, it's a little thing. The officer inquires whether he has a history of theft or prior arrests, as the behavior exhibited doesn't align with that of a typical shoplifter. However, the kid denies any previous involvement in theft or encounters with the law. But hey, there's a first time for everything, right? The officer persists in gathering evidence and statements. He arranges for the kid's keys to be given to his female friend so she can take his car home all while the teenager continues to cry. Clearly nervous, he starts apologizing, but in the end, he's still going to get arrested. The bond, you've never, have you ever stolen anything before? Okay, I only, okay. I only ask that because if you have before, that bumps it up So, If you don't, I believe the bond is 100, 180 bucks for this, yeah, it's, it's, it's like 500 bucks total. Worth my phone's dead, which it is. Um, I don't, I don't know my mom's, my Which, mom's no. number, but she's, uh, she's, she's on a cruise there. right now. Yep. This is an iPhone? Yes, sir. I'll plug it in on the way up there. And, uh, my, uh, my friend is in my car right now. Can I give her my keys to go home or back to my house? I'll give them to her. You want me to so, when you get up there, they'll let you get five numbers out your phone, okay? So you get a couple choices for friends. If you know anybody else's phone number by heart, don't write that one down, because you know that one. Get some other ones. You'll be able to get out tonight. As long as you can call somebody, you'll be able to get out tonight. Okay, buddy? It's a little thing. It's a little thing. All right? It's nothing crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get you. He's warning me. I get you. It's just, we'll get it all done tonight. We'll get it squared away. After informing him that he'll be dropping five numbers when he gets to the station, he continues to panic. The officer further explains to him that he'll get a citation with the court date, and all he has to do is show up to the court session. But the catch here is that he would have to live in the county. After everything has been established, the teenager is put in cuffs and taken out of Walmart to the cop car, which will be transporting him to Orange County. This this is something that we can write and give you the the paper with the court date on it, and then you just gotta show up with the court date. The catch with that is you have to either live in you have to live in the county. That's in Orange County though. That's the issue. So. I, We'll be able to get you out tonight, so you don't have to worry about too much. Okay. I'll go ahead and have you stand up for me. Go ahead and put your hands together like you're praying. It's a little bit more comfortable. To get your wrists a little bit closer. Well, I was about to say, bro. So I get these locked. Oh, they don't tighten up. I got another one for this part. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're all good, buddy. Alright, go ahead and sit back down. Alright, uh... Second. Alright, so we're good there. I'm about to leave. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. It's not a personal one. Hey, you have a good night. Check it again. I'm good. So it'll be locked up. So I have to process and everything like that. And then, um... Might. The, some yeah. bondsmen might do more than 50 because it's, yeah, he'll probably it's less than a thousand bucks. So, yeah. But yeah, the, it, sh it won't be more than 500. After securing the teenager's hands in preparation for transporting him to the police station for further investigation, the officers communicated to the teenager's friend that his bail was estimated to be around $500. Yes, sir. Well, this will be a good lesson. Maybe he will learn not to send you to Walmart to steal. I, but I, if I tell you something, he said if I didn't go steal it, he was going to
gonna kill me if I came back empty handed. Uh huh, go ahead and have seen the back. I'm call. serious, that's my mom, he abuses me. 18 year old caught stealing implicates her boyfriend. Teens. They would go the extra mile to get in trouble and still craft one absurd story to try and get themselves out. However, accusing someone else of avoiding consequences might not be the most ethical approach. Nicole, on the other hand, seems determined to evade jail time after being apprehended for shoplifting. On May 28, 2023, police body camera footage captured the arrest of a girl named Nicole following a shoplifting incident at Walmart in response to a call received by a Pullman police officer. It seems that the officer was familiar with Nicole, addressing her by her first name. In a plea to the officer, Nicole claims that the security assured her they wouldn't involve the police and emphasizes her need to go to work that day. The officer decides to confront the security personnel to ascertain the details. During the interaction, it was revealed that Nicole had allegedly stolen merchandise totaling $800, which included items such as a $140 kitty litter box and $40 worth of steaks. Consequently, like other shoplifters, Nicole faces a lifetime ban from Walmart. Hello, Nicole. Welcome back. I don't want to get arrested. See you. Well, you shouldn't have shoplifted then. Please. You know what I mean? I don't want to get arrested. I have to go to work today. Please. No. So what happened, Zane? Uh, started watching because of the merchandise and that merchandise she has in the car, which is the stuff outside the door. Me. Um, she selected the cat stuff, groceries, stuff in the bakery, um, walked over to the produce wall there by the grocery door, and then turned and went out the grocery door, and I saw the the sidewalk. Perfect. You going to type everything for me? Yes, please, please. Did you get trespassed forever? Yes. That's please good. Don't Smart. Arrest me, please. I was going to say that's a good idea. Stay please. seated, Nicole. Please. Don't be standing up. Please don't arrest me. Please. Yeah, look. I'll be the witness. I have a work. I have to go to work today. The officer swiftly proceeds to read Nicole her rights, leaving no doubt that she is facing arrest. Following this, the officer seeks to hear Nicole's side of the story. Nicole explained that she was hungry, lacked food, and didn't have essential items like clothes or a litter box for her cat. However, the irony arises when she chooses to shop for non-essential items, including a $40 ribeye steak which doesn't align with a narrative of being driven by starvation. In an attempt to defend her actions, Nicole brings her boyfriend into the equation, asserting that he required sweets due to his diabetic condition and needed new shoes. Despite these explanations, the officer proceeds with the arrest. I'm starving. I have no food at home. Food stamps, I, I don't have any food stamps. Mm -hmm. Where do you, uh... You don't, do you? Could probably drink water. What else we got? Uh, this is men's Reebok for 18 bucks. Probably underwear. Underwears. Men's shoes. Your boyfriend ain't got no shoes. He just came in here barefoot. Curious about the boyfriend Nicole has implicated, the officer questions her about his involvement. Nicole confesses that her boyfriend instructed her to steal the items. She explains that she won't be paid until the 17th, and they've already used up their remaining money, including their savings. However, she probably didn't think picking cheaper items would be considered theft. Following the interrogation of the stolen items, the officer asks her to wait while he discusses the situation with security. Did Trisha move? No. She's still living up there too? You're 18, right? 19. 19. Why'd you come back up from Virginia? Oh boy. I don't know, Nicole. I don't know what to do. Hmm. Let me talk to let me talk to Zane. We're gonna figure it out. So just hang out right there with me, all right? Don't go nowhere. I can catch you. After the officer finishes discussing the situation with security, he presents them with two options for dealing with Nicole. They can either escort her out of the store and release her, or they can take her to the holding area, where she would be fingerprinted and undergo the proper arrest process. As expected. The security personnel choose the latter option, and Nicole finds herself arrested for second-degree theft. You want to you forward and get the hell off your property, or you want me to take her to holding and fingerprint her? So. After Nicole is handcuffed, the officer escorts her out to the police car. Surprisingly, on the way, she makes an unexpected statement. She implicates her boyfriend, alleging that he threatened to harm her if she didn't steal those items. However, the officer remains skeptical of such claims. To make matters more complicated, Nicole adds that both she and her mother are victims of his abusive behavior. Hey, sir. 
Well, this will be a good lesson. Maybe he will learn not to send you to Walmart to steal. I, but I, if I tell you something, he said if I didn't go steal it, he was going to kill me if I came back empty handed. Uh huh, go ahead and have a seat back. I'm Nicole. serious, that's my mom. He abuses me. While it's possible Nicole made the statement to evade trouble, the truth can only be determined through proper investigations. Without any delay, the officer locks her up in a holding cell and proceeds to visit Nicole's boyfriend. Surprisingly, the young man, identified as Garrison, asserts that he had no knowledge of Nicole's intent to steal from Walmart. He denies being in a state of starvation, but there seems to be some credibility to his claim about having diabetes. Who are you? Garrison. Garrison? Hey, Garrison. Uh, the reason I'm here is I uh, arrested Nicole for stealing from Walmart. The officer directly questioned him about the allegation Nicole made, claiming he threatened to harm her if she didn't return the stolen items. To this, Garrison vehemently denies any such threat and expresses bewilderment at why Nicole would make such an accusation. Interestingly, Garrison doesn't appear surprised at all upon hearing about Nicole's claim. When pressed further, he openly acknowledges that he isn't bothered by her statement and continuously maintains that he never uttered any threats. Did you tell Nicole that you were going to kill her if she didn't come back with full hands? You didn't threaten to kill her if she didn't steal for you? Well, folks, you've witnessed it all. Garrison vehemently denied every accusation Nicole threw at the police, showing no intention of contesting the matter. In the aftermath, Nicole found herself in police custody under the weight of allegations involving the theft of $800 worth of merchandise, including a $140 kitty litter box and $40 stakes. Subsequently, she was arrested for felony theft and spent approximately six hours in custody. Nicole later entered a guilty plea and received a sentence of 10 days in jail. However, she was granted an alternative to incarceration, completing 80 hours of community service. Additionally, she had the option to earn one hour of community service credit for every three hours of paid employment, provided she stayed out of trouble for the next 24 months. Alongside these conditions, she was obligated to pay a fine of $43. Can you stand okay. up, turn around, put your hands behind your back, and you place her under arrest? For we're gonna for shoplifting. We're like gonna we're right? gonna so we're gonna go out to the car. Basically, I'm gonna write you a citation, and then I'm gonna release you. Okay. okay. I was about but to say my name. Just stand up, stand up, and then we can leave us out there. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. I'm just gonna handcuff you for a little bit. Okay. Sorry. Did you explain this one? Obviously, this one. Are those too tight? No, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. This incident occurred on April 11, 2022, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. An officer responded to a call from a Walmart Supercenter employee about a woman who was caught shoplifting. The woman confessed to the accusations and was held in a security room until the officer arrived. The officer was briefed on the situation and decided to place the woman under arrest. He took her to the patrol vehicle and prepared a citation before releasing her. Good, man. How are you? Hi. Zane. Officer of the Federal Police Department. Do you have an ID on it? I do not. I don't have an ID or social or anything. My identity got stolen. That's what I was telling them. I can't even get any of that because my identity was stolen. What's your name? Nicole. Mata. M-A-T. Do you spell Nicole with a C? A the H, I mean? No. N-I-C-O-L-E. Mata. M-A-T-A. Your birthday? September 3rd, 1998. You can stand there for a second, turn around, and put your hands behind your back. I'm gonna search and make sure you don't have anything in your pockets oh, or anything. What the heck are you doing? Like this? Can you pro interlock your fingers, interlace them, turn your hands upside down? Now like that. Perfect. All right, I'm just gonna get my hand in here and pull on these fingers. All right. I'm gonna use the back side of my hand. Make sure you don't have anything in your pocket. Can you use the back side of my hand again? An officer arrives at the Walmart Supercenter and is welcomed by a man in the security room. They get down to business as the officer enters the room and sees the woman. The suspect, named Nicole Dean Mata, sat with her belongings as the officer entered. The officer asked Nicole if she was with any means of identification, and she informed them she could not get any because her identity was stolen. She cooperates with the officers and gives them her name and date of birth. The officer gives the information to dispatch. He instructs Nicole to stand up and place her hands behind her back while locking her fingers together. The officer proceeds to search her carefully and prevent any inappropriate form of contact. 
He asks Nicole if she is in possession of any items while he searches her, and she informs him of a card in her pocket. The officer takes out the card and asks her to sit down. He searches her bag but finds only receipts in it. The receipts are for the items Nicole purchased from the store. The officer takes notes of his observations while an employee gives Nicole some documents to sign. The employees discuss the situation while Nicole sits quietly. Can you stand up, turn around, put your hands behind your back, have your place under arrest? We're going to, for shoplifting, we're going to, so we're going to go to the car. Basically, I'm going to write you a citation and then I'm going to release you, okay? But just stand up, stand up, no, you can leave us up there. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. I'm just going to handcuff you for a little bit, okay? Sorry. Are those too tight? No, but that's Oh, yeah, yeah. So, we're just going to go to the back passenger side. It shouldn't take too long to get this citation wrote up. The officer instructs Nicole to stand and place her hands behind her back as she is under arrest. Nicole is shocked by his statement, but he explains that he must detain her and take her to the patrol vehicle before writing a citation and releasing her. Nicole is relieved by his explanation and immediately stands up. She places her hands behind her back, and the officer puts her in handcuffs. The employee informs her that she will be placed on a two-year trespass notice and isn't allowed to go to any Walmart branch across the country. The second officer asks about the items on the floor, and they inform him that Nicole purchased them, and they aren't the stolen items. The officers escorted Nicole out of the room and helped her with her items. They walk to the patrol vehicle, and the officer places Nicole in the back seat. He informs her that the citation shouldn't take too long and begins using the computer in the car. The officer gets more information from Nicole and puts them into the system. There's honestly a really dumb reason to need a 16, but my printer's not working. I'm trying to just cite this chick out for the shoplifting. So it's not registering at all? Yeah, it's not even popping up on the screen. Matt could be tried adding it as a printer in settings and everything. So there's, there's, a sticker on there. there's not a sticker on this printer. Oh. Yeah. Well, there should be one on the computer. Oh, there's not one on the computer either. There should be a sticker right here. Is there not one right there? Uh, there's not one there or on top of the printer. See, I don't know how this works though because I've already created the citation. So I don't know how I would print it on another vehicle. You know what I mean? Do the same thing, but that one you'll avoid since you can. Uh, oh, so I just have to get a sergeant to avoid it. Yeah. You'll, no, you'll send an email to Emily Jones. Okay. Yeah. Too easy. Too easy. Right. No, you're good. The officer steps out of his vehicle after a discussion with his colleague. Another patrol vehicle pulls up and parks behind his vehicle. He walks to the patrol vehicle as the driver steps out and explains that the printer in his car is malfunctioning. The malfunction prevents him from printing the citation he is to present to Nicole, so she remains in custody for the time being. The arriving officer understood the situation and offered the computer in his vehicle. The officer on the ground doesn't know how it'll work because he has already created the citation. It seems he doesn't know how to use a different printer to print out the citation. The arriving officer instructs him to send the created citation to him as an email and they realize it's an easy solution. He steps into the vehicle and begins using the computer. Sorry, I had some printer issues. Have to go to the bathroom. That's oh, I'm all I'm sorry. worried about. I'm sorry. You want to walk over here to the front car? I'll get these off of you. All right, so you want to get that one? So um, you do have a court date. It'll be May the 9th at 8 a.m. So that's down here. If you flip it over, down here, May the 9th. 8 a.m. Uh, there's the location for it and everything. There's a number there if you have any questions. Uh, you can call and ask them those questions. They're pretty good about answering. Um, I do need you to sign one of these copies. Do you have any questions for me tonight? Just make sure you show up for court or it'll turn into an FTA warrant. And, yeah, it's a lot easier to just get it taken care of. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. The Walmart security employee emerges with a written affidavit and gives it to the officer. He also produced a receipt for the items stolen, and it showed a subtotal of 198. 
$15. The officer returned to his vehicle with the citation and opened the door for Nicole. He apologizes for the delay and explains the issues with the printer. The officer takes off the handcuffs and informs Nicole she has a court date on May 9th. He also handed her a copy of the citation, and she signed it. He advises her to show up to court, or else the citation will turn into an FTA warrant. The officer released Nicole after explaining, and she left with her belongings. Shoplifter squeezes under small car to avoid being arrested after stealing $2,500 in electronics. Let me see your hands, buddy. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. What did I do? Other hand, other hand. Other what hand. I do? Let me see your other hand right now. I got a receipt. Over here by liquor. Liquor, liquor lane. Hands. I dropped my marijuana. The there it is. That's on Turn me. around. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Do it right now. The incident in this body cam footage occurred on December 12th, 2022 in Castleberry. An officer received a call from a Walmart staff about an active theft while on his lunch break. The officer immediately rushed to the scene and the suspect began running. A pursuit ensued and the officer eventually apprehended the suspect, who attempted to hide under a vehicle in the parking lot. The officer apprehended the suspect and took him back into the building. Hands up! Hands up! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! 1025 over by the credit union. Let me see your hands, buddy. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. What did I do? Other hand, other hand. Other what hand. Did I do? Let me see your other hand right now. I got a receipt. Over here by liquor. Liquor, liquor lane. Hands. I dropped my marijuana. The there it is. That's on Turn me. around. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Do it right now. I got my receipt. Hey, don't move. I'm not. Ow! Hey! I'm right here. here! So why are you running? Do you I told exercise? you I brought my weed. Do you think Who I can run? Do you think I care about weed? Well, listen. I'm scared when the lady's like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I it means it stop. I ran. It means stop. A police officer arrives at a Walmart after receiving a call of a theft from the store. While on the scene, he noticed a man acting suspiciously while leaving the building. The man saw the officer and threw what appeared to be an illegal substance. The suspect took to his heels as the officer pursued him and refused to stop, even as the officer yelled. They ran into the parking lot as the officer called for backup and gave dispatch the suspect's description. The officer followed the suspect and found him trying to hide under a vehicle. He immediately aimed his weapon at the suspect and instructed him to pull out his hands. The suspect pulls out his head and asks what he did wrong. He claims to have dropped the drugs and says he has a receipt even though he wasn't asked about it. The officer instructs him to turn around and places him in handcuffs. Backup arrives as the officer apprehends the suspect, and he asks the suspect why he ran. The man claims to have been scared after dropping the drugs and didn't want to get in trouble. The officer makes fun of him for trying to hide under a car, but the man says he was trying to get his glasses. The officers accompany the man to the building. He says he ran from them because he was scared. Any guns, knives? No, I have a... to worry about? Can you put your, put your chest up against the wall? Oh. What's this I have my right here? tablet. That's my tablet. I'm taking it out right now. Okay. Shoplifting? Do you already got the... And maybe yeah, another charge for touching the, the car. That's not yours. Right okay. What? What's your first name? And if you lie to me, that's another charge, so... Stop playing the stuff back there. Maybe What's your first name? I'm not done. I was just trying to... Do you have your ID on you? It's her. It's in my wallet. It's in your wallet? You can grab the wallet for me. Okay. I appreciate that. The officers arrive at the building with the suspect as he continues his claim of running because of the drugs. They enter the security room and ask the suspect if he is in possession of any weapons. An officer searches the suspect to see if he is in possession of anything dangerous or illegal. The suspect insists that he has a receipt for the items he purchased, but the officer asks why he ran away without taking his belongings. They instruct the suspect to sit on the ground with his back facing the wall. The suspect continues talking about his receipt. But the officer doesn't listen, because his claims are obviously false. Another officer enters the room, and they list the suspect's offenses. They threaten to charge him for possession of an illegal substance, shoplifting, and touching a car that isn't his. The officer also states that lying is another charge and asks the man what his first name is. The suspect says his ID is in his wallet, and the officer instructs him to pick it up. Oh, crazy, what's the receipt with this? And we got this too? No, I didn't! Uh, uh, that's a felony now. That was right there on the yeah. thing. 
when I drop my weed, if I talk to you like a man. Yeah. You're still going anyway. It's a felony charge. It's over 750 bucks. So you're, you're going either way. So this is up to you. That's okay. Hey, that's your right. That's your, that's your right, right? I'm mad at you for that, no? Hey, I'll give you somebody. What? I'll give you somebody. Give me somebody? Now, let me ask you this. Now, that's going to be up to the detectives. You can tell a detective something and work with that. I can't promise you no leniency. I can't do that. A Walmart employee steps into the room with a shopping cart full of items the suspect tried to steal. The officer is in shock as he sees the items, and the man denies taking the items. The officer reads the suspect his rights and asks him to be honest about the situation. The suspect asks the officer if he can talk to him like a man. The officer agrees but informs him that he is still going to jail because his crime is a felony. The items he attempted to steal were worth over $750, so he had to be arrested. The suspect insists that he didn't do anything, and the officer says he has a right to deny the charges. The officer says they cannot be lenient with the suspect for his crimes. I mean, you're going either way. That's more than a thousand dollars. So, okay, that's fine. Anything on you that's gonna stick me, poke me, hurt me? Did you hear me screaming? Stop, police! I didn't hear nothing. That's crazy. I didn't hear nothing. When I drop my weed. Do you under? Do you go under cars normally to check oil that aren't yours? I dropped my glasses. I told. So you dropped your glasses while you were falling to the ground. You know, I saw you get on the ground and go underneath the car. I don't know what you're and then talking you had, about. I didn't do nothing. You realize, you realize this records, right? I didn't it do saw nothing. You run out. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I dropped my marijuana. Okay, that's fine. I that's my jacket. You're okay. That's my... Put my your jacket. chest up against the wall. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm gonna Stop. Try. Stop with this. Oh, well, you got a $20 bill? Yes, I just got cash back. It gave me cash back and it says that. That's awesome. What's going on? You, I told you I got a tattoo. You squeeze my arm. It's okay, well, that, that's what happens when you get transported. Let's... Tell my friend. Nope. Can I smoke a cigarette? Please? Nope. Nope, not when you're running from us. Put your back up against the seat for me. The suspect remained quiet, and the officer asked if he was sure he didn't want to speak. He claims not to know anything, and says he didn't hear when the officer was screaming at him to stop running. He says he went under the vehicle to get his glasses because they fell. The officer saw the suspect as he fell to the ground, and the suspect said the officers were trying to plant him with something he didn't do. The officers go through his receipt and compare it to the items in the shopping cart. The items don't match, and the officers get the suspect to stand up. They find other items in his pockets, and an officer takes a photo of his face. They take the suspect back to the patrol vehicle, and then to the police station. He was charged with grand theft for attempting to steal items worth almost two five hundred dollar and was sentenced to probation. Lexington Park woman arrested for shoplifting at California Walmart. This incident occurred on November 21st, 2021 in California. The footage, taken by someone who witnessed the arrest, shows a woman named Shamia Shanti Taylor getting surrounded by officers as she sits in her car. The officers convince her to step out of the vehicle as they place her under arrest for shoplifting. The officers ensure they follow due protocol to prevent the matter from escalating any further. An officer stands beside a vehicle that Shamia Shante Taylor sits in. An unidentified woman stands close to the driver's seat. Taylor shuts the door on the officer as the supposed driver proceeds to get in the vehicle. Shortly after that, more officers arrived at the scene and stood with their colleagues. The conversation they have with Taylor is inaudible in the video. But later, an investigation revealed that she stole items worth over $250 from a Walmart store. Doesn't matter. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, 
not saying like you can do a crazy thing, but I can take you to jail instead. Now, okay. So, so. I don't even have to pee. Now, so, the way to make you think is like this. You want to get a citation, is that it? I'm going to have to take the clock. Okay, well, if you don't know that the keys aren't in there, you know. Yeah. I don't know that. So I walk around the corner, and you're locking the door, and you're looking open the door. What do you think? Because I think they're going to try and leave. Can you tell them you're going to four times, drive off? I heard you tell them you're going to four times. Okay. So that's what I said. Did you under it? No, that's how my jersey does. No, no pants down, okay? Face the car for me. Are you wearing a shirt under this? Yeah. Okay. Nothing out of the rod or anything. You don't bring anything else in the tent. Taylor sits in the driver's seat, and the officer attempts to open the door. She doesn't allow him to open it and talks to the officers through the window. A third officer appears and instructs Taylor to step out of her vehicle. Taylor talks to her unidentified friend, and the officers place her under arrest. They took Taylor to the patrol vehicle and searched her for any suspicious items. Further investigation revealed that Taylor failed to scan several items at the self-checkout register. Taylor claimed that she was tired of waiting for an associate to assist her with an issue in scanning the merchandise. She was later transported to the St. Mary's County Detention Center. And that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Don't forget that opting for a shoplift is a hasty and thoughtless choice that usually leads to regret, unless you get away with it, that is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more cool videos like this one. Well, stay out of trouble, and I'll see you in the next video.